hi let us continue the discussion of chapter 10 that is file system and today we'll discuss the topic file system mounting sharing and protection so let us start the discussion of file system mounting so we know that whenever a particular file is created in order to use that file that file should be opened if you want to read the content in the same way whenever we have a file system so if you want to use that file system first of all that file system should be mounted so mounting the file system means enabling that particular file system so that that can be used for the required purpose so here uh, we'll see an example here so what uh, how exactly the file system will be mounted uh, so an unmounted file system the next uh, figure we have is mounted at a mount point so here we have the two figures the first one is the existing figure and you can see the files and the subdirectories are arranged in the form of the hierarchy so here the it starts with the root root directory and below that we have the different directories like uh, we have the users directory below that again the sub directories are there and uh, the files are there so this is the existing system and uh, the second figure is the unmounted partition unmounted partition means this here this particular structure of files exist but these cannot be used at a point these are not used by a particular user or these are not accessible for a particular user so that's why in order to use this particular partition or these directories these directories must be or this file system must be mounted so the next figure we'll see how we can mount this one so in the next figure what we have done is so we have mounted this particular file system under the directory that is users so in that case this particular file system is used is accessible by this particular user so we have a particular path also here that is root followed by slash user slash this particular file system so this is shown here as i told here it starts with root and after that we have users and to this users directory we have mounted that particular the unmounted file system so this is nothing but a mounted one so now it is possible to access the content of these directories and here whatever uh, the location or the directory at which we mount this particular file system this is called as a mount point so next we'll see uh, the file sharing so we know that whatever the machines we are using nowadays so all are multitasking and user machines so in multi user system means the number of users will be using that particular uh, machine so here uh, the file sharing means so here uh, the name itself indicates so whatever the files that exist on a system so the files must be shared among the different users so when we enable the sharing of the files so we have to ensure the protection of those particular files i think in the previous lectures we saw this so how to protect the access of a particular file means if a one process is uh, or the one user is reading the content of the file the others will be allowed so this is called as read lock but if a particular user is changing the content of that file so then at that time no other users will be allowed to either uh, read or write that particular file so that is called as a write lock so all these things we have already discussed in the previous lectures so here uh, file, share, uh, file sharing means again it depends on the type of system which you are using so nowadays whatever the systems we have so all the systems are in most of the systems are remote file systems remote file system means uh, in most of the time the file will not be present on the machine in, on which you are working the file may be present somewhere else and uh, uh, through a particular network or uh, through uh, some sort of connectivity it is possible to access those particular files so 
So, again to support this we have uh, the two type of uh, systems here that is one is the distributed system another one is the network file system. In distributed system uh, what happens is a remote file system allows a computer to mount one or more file systems from one or more remote machines as the name itself indicates distributed means whatever the files are there although they are at the remote uh, place but remotely it is not present on a particular machine. So, some part is present on one machine, some part is present on another machine and so on. So, that file itself is distributed among the number of uh, machines and it is possible to access the files that are distributed among the different machines on a single machine to a particular network. So, this is an example of again the file system. So, another one is uh, nothing but the network file system. So, this is again you can consider the variation of the distributed system only adding some restrictions on the that. That is here it is a common distributed file sharing method. So, here NFS means usually what happens now the client server uh, uh, type of communication like whatever the files uh, systems where the files to be uh, shared are available these are called as servers and the machines on which you want to access these files are called as clients. So, whenever a client want to access that particular file, so it should authenticate himself uh, itself so that uh, the particular files uh, that are available on the server will not be damaged or will not be disturbed. So, this is all about the file sharing. So, next we have so that is what again the file sharing as I saw as I told you uh, whenever we have the NFS. So, the client should authenticate itself. So, for that uh, it may be having the user IDs and whenever you want to uh, separate the access permission for a particular group you can have the concept of group IDs also. So, that is what the discussion. So, uh, as I told you the file sharing whatever the systems we use today all are the remote file systems. So, it uses the networking to allow file system access between the systems. So, it may be manually via the programs like file transfer protocol that is FTP or it may be automatically through the distributed file system which we already discussed. and. Uh, we have one more thing that is world wide web through internet also it is possible to share the files nowadays. In client server model is uh, whatever the discussion we had it is nothing but NFS. So, next we will see uh, the failure modes that are caused by the file system uh, that is file sharing. So, we know that failure mode means whenever your particular system is operating. So, there may be different uh, number of failures, the different type of failures and so on. Excuse me, but here whenever you provide this file sharing also it is going to add some more types of failures into the system. So, the examples are the remote file systems add new failure modes due to the network failure, uh, the server failure and so on. So, recovery from this failure can involve the state information about status of each remote request and stateless protocols such as NFS include all information in each request allowing easy recovery but less security. So, that is what. So, here as we provide this file sharing it is going to add again the different type of failures like the media failure, network failure, server failure and so on. So, again in order to recover from this again there are certain protocols. So, these are the part of this NFS. So, next we will see uh, the consistency semantics under file sharing. So, consistency means it is the correctness. So, consistency semantics specify how multiple users are to access a shared file simultaneously that is what whenever uh, you enable uh, the filing file sharing. So, you have to specify how exactly that file can be shared among the number of users. So, that the content of the file will not be distorted and whatever the users that are accessing that particular content. So, all should get what they expect, there should not be any unexpected things. So, for that again there are different semantics or the rules that are to be followed. So, here we will see some example like if you have the Unix system. So, on Unix system the semantics may be like this that is uh, whenever you write to an open file by a user 
are visible immediately to the other users that have this file open means here on unix system whenever a user uh, opens a file and uh, writes to that file then whatever the content he writes this is visible to all the other users so based on this the others will come to know that this particular user is writing, writing the content so that they may wait for some time so one more of one mode of sharing allows users to share the pointer of current location into the file so that is what whenever a particular file is opened a file handler or the pointer will be associated with that file so all these things are there so the next one is session semantics so again a particular file system that is an to file system afs so that supports this following uh, consistency semantics like uh, these are uh, i think uh, they contrary to the unix semantics so here uh, writes to an open file by a user are not visible immediately to other users that have the same file open so that's why i told you it's a controversy it's a contrary to the unix system so once a file is closed the changes made to it are visible only in session starting the letter and apart from this two the third one is immutable shared file system so here it's a unique approach and uh, the immutable shared files once a file is declared as shared by its creator it cannot be modified so in this way the consistency semantics can be uh, provided so next we'll see how to provide the protection protection means uh, this is just a uh, access right so here we know that file owner or creator should be able to control what can be done and by whom it can be done so here again we have uh, the different uh, uh types of accesses the types of access may be read write execute append delete list these are the different access permissions that can be granted on a particular file so next we'll see how exactly these access permissions can be given and how to how this particular access permissions can be handled or managed on a particular system so here uh, the mode of access uh, usually it may be one of these three the write or the execute so here uh, let us consider uh, let us consider some example implementation here so three classes of users are there so for the owner uh, access uh, usually this is an example of the unix system so in unix the file attributes will be there and in that attribute three bits will be reserved for this three uh, flags this r indicates read permission w indicates write permission and x indicates the execute permission if the corresponding bit is set to 1 that indicates the corresponding permission is present if 0 that permission is not present so in this example owner access the file creator or the owner should have the access to a particular file to read the content of that file to write to the content of that file and to execute that file but when we have a group access like a particular group is there so to that group if you want to provide the access you may provide access in this way like you provide the read access you provide the write access but you don't provide the execute access and the third one is public access in public access i think actually this is reverse one so instead of providing the execute access you can provide only the read access instead of providing write and the execute so in this way this particular things can be managed so again on the unix systems we have the different commands like the ch mode cgrp and so on so these are used for this particular things